Hello students, this is machine design 1. We are in the module 1, basics of mechanisms. In the previous video, we have seen inversion of 4 bar chain mechanism and then inversion of single cylinder crank chain mechanism. Particularly, we have seen about quick return mechanisms with two quick return mechanism and then crank and slaughter lever quick return mechanism. So, today we are going to continue the inversion of single cylinder crank chain mechanism. Fourth one, oscillating cylinder engine. Earlier, in the previous videos, we have seen about single slider crank chain mechanism with worth quick return mechanism with worth quick return mechanism single slider crank chain quick return mechanism with worth quick return mechanism and then beam engine it's a fourth example oscillating cylinder engine it's also example for inversion of single slider crank chain mechanism so in the oscillating cylinder engine look at the image there is a fixer link so this is fixer link this is fixer link okay the fixer link is used as a connecting rod okay and this is crank this is crank and this is piston rod and at the end of the piston rod there is a piston okay it was inserted in the cylinder the piston rod was inserted inside the cylinder okay now when you see this point from this view you might think this fixer rod or this fixer link connecting rod is connected to the piston rod this when we see this image it seems like it seems like this fixer link is connected with the piston rod but that is not true actually this fixer link is not connected to piston rod this piston sorry this connecting rod or fixer link is fixed on the cylinder fixed on the cylinder or hinged on the cylinder not fixed hinged connected or joined on the cylinder the outside the cylinder okay if you see the next animation or next image you could understand see this is a this is a fixer link okay in the previous i don't know we have seen no this is a fixer link and this fixer link is hinged hinged on the cylinder cylinder wall hinged on the cylinder wall outside the cylinder outside the cylinder it was hinged okay not on the piston rod this is piston rod this one is piston rod this is piston and this whole thing is fixer link the whole thing is up to here this is fixed fixer link and the fixer link was hinged on the this is hinged joint hinged on the cylinder wall that is outside the cylinder not on the piston rod but if you see your book they will give the diagram like this but it doesn't mean that it is joined on the piston rod it is connected on the cylinder outside the cylinder not inside the cylinder suppose if it is inside the cylinder and connected with the piston rod means it will be a structure it cannot move okay it cannot move that is not at all possible okay so this fixer link is not connected with the piston rod okay it is connected outside the cylinder see this animation here you could understand so this this is crank okay this is 
crank and this is the this blue line this blue line is the piston rod and this one is this is piston okay piston piston rod the blue line is piston and the bottom of the blue blue line that is piston rod and this red one this red one is this red one is cylinder you might ask me sir where is the fixer link okay from this point to this point that is fixer link okay the crank is connected with the fixer link the cylinder is connected on the fixer link that's all okay like uh, it might be uh, behind behind this mechanism there may be there may be a wall and this crank is fixed on the wall that is hinged on the wall like that this cylinder is hinged on the wall i hope you you, you have understood this mechanism okay. so when the crank link uh, link to crank rotates the piston attached to the piston rod will reciprocate and the cylinder will oscillate okay this cylinder the cylinder will oscillate like this the cylinder will oscillate like this okay in the animation we can see see the cylinder cylinder is oscillating up and down up and down it is oscillating like this once again it is going in the upward direction so this process is repeated last one pendulum pump or bull engine pendulum pump or bull engine here also in this case also crank when you look at the diagram it will look like crank is fixed on the or hinged on the piston rod but it is not so piston is sorry crank is not fixed on the piston rod it is behind that piston rod it is fixed on the wall or something else okay so crank connecting rod cylinder piston rod these are the links when the when the crank when the crank rotates this piston will move up and down inside the cylinder this is how this mechanism will work pendulum pump look at this diagram you can easily understand so inversions of single cylinder crank chain mechanism is over next double cylinder crank chain mechanism first of all we are seeing four bar chain mechanism first of all we are seeing four bar chain mechanism that is quadratic chain mechanism four bar chain means this mechanism is having four links 1 2 3 4 that's why this is called as four bar chain mechanism this is called as four bar chain mechanism at the same time here in this case it is having one crank one connecting rod one slider piston is a slider this is a piston piston is a slider it is having single slider it is having only one slider that's why it is called as single slider crank chain mechanism next we are going to see double slider crank chain mechanism particularly inversion of double slider crank chain mechanism 
So single slider means it is having single slider. Double slider means definitely it is going to have double slider. So the examples for double slider crankshaft mechanisms are elliptical Drummel, Scotch York mechanism, old arms coupling. Example for double slider crank chain mechanism, inversions of double slider crank chain mechanisms are elliptical drummers, scotch yak mechanism, old arms coupling. First, let us see the elliptical drummer. This is elliptical drummer. Why they have named this mechanism as elliptical drummer? What is the reason? I will tell you the reason now. So in this case, this piston, it is having two piston or two slider. Slider B. Consider slider B as link 1. Okay. Then connecting rod. Connecting rod between slider B and slider A. Consider that as link 2 two links now this a is also a slider second slider so this is link 3 okay at the end this frame this frame is there no this frame this frame the whole setup the whole setup the whole frame is a fixed link okay the whole frame or slotted plate is also called as fixer link slotted plate or frame or fixer link this is link 4 so it is having four links slider 1 first link connecting rod that is bar second link slider 2 that is slider a third link finally slotted plate or frame or fixer link link 4 totally four links are there okay suppose if you fix if you fix if you fix a pencil or sketch at this place okay suppose if you fix a pencil or sketch at this place on the connecting rod at this place on the connecting rod what will happen that will trace that pencil or sketch will trace a perfect ellipse that will trace a perfect ellipse that's why they have named this instrument as elliptical trammel elliptical trammel So when the piston B or slider B moves in this direction, slider A will move in the downward direction. Let us see how it is working. So from the money uh, from the animation itself, we can understand how it is working. So, few more examples. So, this is how elliptical trammel will work. This, if you fix pencil or pens, pen or sketch at this end means, at this end, okay, Something at this end means it will trace here, it will trace here ellipse. So, there is a formula for ellipse for every curve, some formula is there. If you take a, a parabola, means I think the formula is a y equal to 4ax. That is a formula for uh, parabola. Similarly, for ellipse, 
there is a formula x by q the whole square plus y by p the whole square equal to cos square theta plus sin square theta. So this is how it is working. We can trace, we can trace ellipse. Next is Scotch-Yag mechanism. In the Scotch-Yag mechanism also, you could see two sliders here. This piston, one slider. This piston is also another slider. So we already we know that this is an inversion of double slider crank chain mechanism. So here one slider, here one slider two sliders so when the crank rotates when the crank rotates this slider will also rotate along with the crank at the same time this slider will move up and down inside this path inside this groove path so when the slider move up and down in this uh, groove path this piston rod will come ba back and forth Okay, it will move back and forth. Then ultimate, ultimately this piston will move front and back. This is how scotch arc mechanism is working. So scotch arc mechanism is converting the rotary motion of the crank into reciprocating motion of the piston. Last one. With this first half of the first module is over. First half of first module is over. Okay. Last one. Last example for double slider crank chain mechanism. Inversion of double slider crank chain mechanism is old amps coupling. Old amps coupling. From the animation itself, you can understand what is the purpose of this coupling. Okay. Where we use coupling? Where we use coupling? We use coupling in many places, particularly to connect two parallel shaft. Suppose here one shaft and here one more shaft. If I want to connect these two shaft, I have to use a coupling. If I put a coupling, it will be connected with each other. So this is the purpose of coupling. Okay, two parallel shaft, two parallel shaft to connect two parallel shaft. Suppose if one shaft is like this and another one shaft is little offset like this. Okay, one shaft is like this and another one shaft is little offset. So how we can connect these two shafts? So in that place, we cannot use normal couplings. Okay. In that place, we cannot use normal couplings. At this place, we can use this old amps coupling. So the purpose, the main purpose of old amps coupling is to connect two offsetted shafts. To connect two offsetted shafts so here you could see in the image so this is shaft a driving shaft this is shaft b driven shaft okay shaft a driving shaft shaft b driven shaft so both the axes are offset by this distance so both are offset by this much distance now we have to connect each other or we have to transfer motion so for this purpose we are going to use old arms coupling it is having this old arms coupling this old arms coupling is having three parts it is having three three parts this is part one 
part one or link one is called as flange. Okay. This is part three. This is also a flange. So both the flange flanges are connected to both the respective driving and the driven shaft. Okay. In between these one and three, in between this first flange and the third flange, they are inserting a piece, special work. Okay. So this piece is called as intermediate piece. This piece is called as intermediate piece. Okay. See this image. This is link three, and this is link one. In the center, in the center, intermediate piece. Or in the center, they have inserted this one. How it is working? In both this flange and this flange, in the center there will be a groove. In the center there will be a groove. Groove, groove means sliding path. Okay, wa? In the center here also one groove. Here also one groove. So both the shaft are having grooves. So on that groove, this intermediate portion with this extrusion. Here also some extrusion. Here also some extrusion. Using this extrusions. It will be fitted inside the This is how it is. So, uh, first half of the first module is over. Okay, well, here we have studied about nearly 12 mechanisms. Nearly 12 mechanisms we have studied here. Four bar chain mechanism, single side crank chain mechanism, and then inversion of four bar chain mechanism, uh, coupling rod of locomotive, uh, bull engine, um, watts indicator. Okay, wa? bull engine, watts indicator. Uh, for inversions of four bar chain mechanism. Okay, next. So, uh, four bar chain mechanism, coupling rod of locomotive, uh, uh, bull engine, watts indicator. Four mechanisms. Next. Uh, next, uh, inversion of Single cylinder crank chain mechanism. Single cylinder crank chain itself a mechanism, first mechanism. And then mm, uh, beam engine. In the first case, bull engine. In the second case, here beam engine. Beam engine with was quick rotor mechanism. Uh, next, crank and slaughter lever quick rotor mechanism. Next, um, Scotch yard mechanism. Then old dams coupling mechanism. So here also how many mechanisms are coming? Six mechanism. Okay, in the first case, four mechanism. Here six mechanism. Totally ten. Now in the inversion of double cell crank chain mechanism. In the inversion of double cell crank chain mechanism, elliptic trammel, scotch yard mechanism, finally old dams coupling. Totally thirteen. Th totally 13, 1, 3. Totally 13 uh, mechanisms are given in your book. Okay, in the first half of the portion, totally 13 mechanisms are given. Okay, all the 13 mechanisms are very important for examination purpose. Okay, definitely they will ask any two mechanism from this 13 mechanism. If you want to attend the questions from first module, Definitely you have to study all the 13 mechanisms. In the next class, we will study about intermediate motion mechanism. Intermediate motion mechanism.